So let's return to the popularization of neo-Darwinism, which is the book The Selfish Gene. Is it metaphor or is it empirical science? In reply to a philosopher, Mary Mitchley, who wrote a review, a very critical review of The Selfish Gene back in 1979, you remember the book was published in 1976, um, he replied to Mary Mitchley that it wasn't a metaphor at all. I believe it is the literal truth, he wrote, provided certain key words are defined in the particular way favoured by biologists. Now, if you haven't understood that statement, I want to teach you what a metaphor is. A metaphor is precisely key words defined in particular ways where you change the meaning of the word. What happened there is that, I'm sorry to say, that a very distinguished scientist, because Richard certainly is that, and a very, very good writer too, um, didn't understand what a metaphor actually meant. For those of you who want to follow up these philosophical and linguistic points in greater detail, the article that I published last year in the Journal of Physiology goes through this point in much more detail than I can do in a general lecture. The point is very simple. A metaphor does not cease to be a metaphor simply because one defines a word to mean something other than its normal meaning. Indeed, it's the function of metaphor to do precisely this. So let's do a little experiment. This is an experiment on you. I'm going to compare the two possible metaphors here, genes as prisoners versus selfish genes, or genes as cooperators, if you like, rather than selfish genes. It doesn't really matter. The question I'm going to put to you, as I put two texts up, is what conceivable biological experiment could distinguish between the two groups of metaphors? So let's take the selfish gene metaphor, he wrote, it's beautiful language, I have to say. Uh, Richard has an ability to write that is admirable. Now they, genes, swarm in huge colonies, safe inside gigantic lumbering robots, that's you and me of course, sealed off from the outside world. That is the Weissman barrier, that is the central dogma of molecular biology. Communicating with it by tortuous indirect routes, manipulating it by remote control, that's the gene-centric view. They are in you and me. That's the only statement that is empirical. They created us body and mind and their preservation is the ultimate rationale for our existence. And in case you didn't understand the selfish gene, he went on to write...